Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'll be teaching you how to create realistic textures for your height map terrain. I'm gonna be using World Machine, which is a software which has a free and a pro version. The free version having a limited resolution of 1000. So, this is the terrain I created in World Machine as a quick showcase for the texturing toolkit. And it's uh, based and referenced off uh, Norwegian fjord cliffs and it has this very heavy stratification going on. You will be able to download this file and to check out how I produce this. This is uh, what the node graph look li looks like. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with Word Machine, I recommend uh, you check out some other tutorials, which are a bit more introductory. But if you're familiar with other node-based programs, it should be quite easy to get into. And basically, here I'm playing with noises and combining them using stratification filters to create these natural stratification effects using some other natural filters like erosion and subtracting some flow lines to create this end terrain with a few rivers and a lake included. So, now if we want to play with the texturing, the way we're going to do that is using the blueprint which I provided, which will be in the description. You will have to get it into the documents and the World Machine documents into the blueprint folder. I have it loaded in the texturing, in the texturing toolkit. And you can see it's very big and uh, just put it somewhere. Drag it like here, and it basically has uh, inputs and outputs. And the water is not mandatory, you can also just not plug anything into the water. And uh, to change the settings or to adjust uh, your coloring, you just have to use the devices with the red boxes around them. So Let's check out what our output looks like right now with the default settings. To do this, I'm loading in a scene view, plugging in the texture and the water. So let's build this to see what it looks like. So here's the results of the texturing toolkit. And um, you can see that the toolkit also adds these small little fake trees which are actually just bumps in the height map and also these uh, small pieces of gravel which I call scree there's uh, two types of trees there's this greener and uh, bigger ones which are the deciduous broadleaf trees and the coniferous which are a bit darker and this you can all adjust by yourself including the distribution settings so Let's take a quick look at what's happening behind the scenes. And uh, basically, I'm taking the terrain and generating these uh, data maps, one for the erosion information and one for the rock information, which get then combined differently with the slope of the terrain and uh, a few noises to create more information maps, one for the grass, one for the gravel, one for the rock and which then get fed into the gradient device which work machine uses to convert a black and white image into a colorized texture using uh, this kind of row here this row of color these then get blended together using different masks here we have uh, masks for the vegetation mask for the gravel mask for the little scree for the rivers, for the snow, and for the rock. And uh, yes, that's pretty much what's happening behind the scenes. And uh, in order to do your own texture, you're gonna be able to intervene. For example, let's uh, try to convert this terrain texture into something a bit more like a Norwegian fjord. For this, I've uh, looked up a few reference images and um, now we're going to use a snipping tool I'm using ShareX 
there's a link in the description, but you can use the Windows snipping tool as well. And I'm basically pressing the shortcut, which brings up the snipping tool, and I'm taking slices of the image, which I'm going to be then using for generating the colors. And basically, Word Machine is using each row or a single row as information for generating the colors for the colorizer device. So I'm taking some rock texture color information and some grass color information. And, uh, it's always important um, to try to not take too big of a piece of an image, like when I take this piece of grass here, there would be too much color information, the image would be too big. Also just never take too small of an image and uh, try to keep the colors varied but not too noisy. Here for example you can see I'm taking some of this brown color, some of the more lighter grass colors and uh, you yeah, just experiment around a bit for yourself. I've already taken quite a few and um, I'm going to import them, so we're going to choose this grass device here, use the external file, browse for the image location, and uh, here you see I've taken quite a few, let's just for example use this one, and voila, you can see World Machine generated the texture out of it, you can also choose which row of the image to use, so this helps with playing around and prototyping quickly and um, yeah say so we want to preview our texture right now there's lots of trees on our terrain so to disable this we bypass the add vegetation to terrain device and uh, blend vegetation which blends the texture mm, here you can see we've got our new grass color and uh, from here I also want to change the gravel and the rock texture. So on the gravel, we import the file. I'm going to choose this one. And for the rock, let's choose a similar color because usually the rock and the gravel are made up of the same stuff. Um, maybe I'm just going to change the color of the gravel to be a bit lighter and maybe a little less saturated minus 0 0.3 also I want to adjust these masks around the river here um, to do this I'm going to river gravel mask and setting this to 15 meters Okay, this looks better. And I also want generally to have less gravel on my terrain. So I'm just gonna change the gravel mask settings, have a bit less of the flow lines, something like 0.55, a bit less of the deposition. And uh, there you go. I also want to remove the snow. You can remove it by changing the angle to zero and um, now let's add back the, the position uh, the vegetation or actually first I want to change the color of the grass slightly and I want uh, the grass at the bottom of the terrain to be much greener than the grass at the top and to do this we can actually just take information from our terrain outside of the texturing toolkit and bring it in to make our own small little adjustments so with a select height we bring it into our texturing import a different file maybe something that's a bit greener like this And let's use a combiner to combine these two. Mm. 
let's check what it looks like. As you can see, the grass here at the bottom is now slightly greener because it gets more water during the year. And uh, yeah, let's go back and change the color of our vegetation. I think this one for the broadleaf trees, this one for the conifers. Oh. And let's go back at the reference images and study a bit the distribution of the vegetation. You can see here we have uh, the trees being distributed quite heavily on the very steep slopes, but uh, only on the bottom part of the terrain. And uh, they're mostly broadleaf trees mm, with a few little splotches of uh, pine trees every now and then. They have quite a saturated color if it's springtime, which I suppose it is in this image. And um, yes, let's try it. Mm, I think we're gonna go into our coniferous mask and uh, reduce it because there's much less pine trees. So we're gonna subtract more of the flow lines. and actually change the height range of our broadleaf trees, maybe 2.2. Change also the slope. We want them growing on higher slopes. Maybe 0.3. Let's change the slope for this, the pine tree as well, something like 43. And let's change the radius of our broadleaf trees to be a bit smaller and maybe slightly denser. By the way, I'm pinning uh, the scene view with the F key so that when I'm accessing other devices, I'm still gonna be able to look at the scene view and the 3D view. And um, Let's enable these devices back with a B button. And you can see we get our trees. And actually, the color is not right. I think we want a bit less saturation. For this, we're going to change the color of our deciduous trees, bring the saturation down to minus 0.15. Change the brightness as well, minus 0.1. Okay. Mm, you can see we also have a few pine trees here and there. And uh, yes. As you can see, it did not took too much time to texture and completely alter the feeling of the terrain. And uh, maybe let's try another little experiment. Let's try replicating these very uh, snowy parts of Norway, which actually looks like it's just freshly snowed. And so the snow accumulates on very steep slopes on the rock. And uh, there's also much less uh, vegetation in this area. So to change this, we're going to go back into our vegetation mask. And um, maybe subtract more of the flow lines from the broadleaf trees. Subtract more of the noise. <coughs> Have them be on less height and just change the overall density to something much smaller, maybe 0.15. Also, change the 
density for the coniferous trees, something like 0.1. Okay, now let's add our snow, and uh, to add this, we're gonna go into the snow mask and uh, put the angle of repose to something quite crazy, maybe 73. Change our snow line so that it goes down into our train, and just let's wait for the results. Okay, I'm just gonna revert this device here, which makes our grass more saturated at the bottom, because in winter, grass does not look that green. And I'm also gonna change the color of our trees to be actually brown, as in winter you would expect the trees to look like. And voila! Here we have our result, just took a few steps to remove the trees and add quite a lot of snow. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you a few more examples of uh, terrains I've textured with this toolkit and uh, I hope you were liking it so far. So here is another example of a terrain I textured with my toolkit. The file for this will also be included as a download. and. Um, for this one, I've scattered much less vegetation and played a bit with the density and uh, some noise distribution to make it look more interesting and more of a grassland feeling. And another very interesting feature I've played with is the snow mask. It has a sun heading and elevation setting and uh, basically with a melt line, you can uh, decide in which direction the sun is going to point and it's going to melt the snow. So as you can see, if I look at the terrain from this direction, there's much less snow as if I look at it from this direction. And it creates uh, quite interesting and realistic patterns. And in this example, I'm uh, playing with some snow and uh, creating a very interesting, uh, very organic flowing pattern with these mountains. Almost looks like some kind of flowers. And uh, distributing a lot of vegetation and a lot of gravel and uh, creating a sort of a stylized style and color. Mm, basically, here in the note graph, I'm playing with some uh, method for blending the snow and the texture and the trees because as you can see I'm not adding the trees directly on top of the snow but the snow is kind of putting itself on top of the trees making only the tops stick out 